dear friends hi today let us talk about dbms users in brief let's start with the term users users are the persons who need information from the database or who uses dbms to carry out their primary responsibilities depending upon their job profile they are provided access to the database either totally or partially as per requirements various type of users which can access the database are database administrator in short dba database designers end users and application programmers first is database administrator in short we say dba so the dba is a person or group of persons who is responsible for the management of database in small organizations dba is performed by single person whereas in large organizations there is a group of dbas who share responsibilities the dba is responsible for defining database structure storage structure and access method authorizing access to the database by grant and revoke permissions to the users for coordinating and monitoring its use managing backups and repairing damages due to hardware and or software failures and for acquiring hardware and software resources as needed for example how will the database be stored in computer memory which user can access which data of the database which operation can be performed by which user taking backup of data time to time so that in case of system failure the database can be recovered from these backups etc are the tasks of the database administrator second type of users is database designers the database designers are the users who design the structure of the database they are responsible for identifying the data to be stored in the database the relationship between the data the constraints for the data and for choosing appropriate structure to represent and store the data it is the responsibility of the database designer to communicate with all the perspectives of the database users in order to understand their requirements so that they can create design that meet their requirements for example in relation model we have seen two tables customer underscore details and customer underscore loan underscore details so thinking about which tables are required what name to be given to these tables which fields will be the part of which table what constraints to be put on the data to be stored in these tables how these tables are interlinked to each other all these tasks are done by database designers now let's come to the users end users end users are those who interact with the database through applications or utilities the end users can be classified according to the way they use the system first is casual end users these users occasionally access the database but may need different information each time they use sophisticated database query to specify their requests for example high level manager who access the data weekly or bi weekly some sophisticated end users may even write application programs for their own use naive end users these users frequently query and update the database using standard type of queries the operations that can be performed by this class of users are very limited 
and affect precise portion of the database. For example, reservation clerks for airlines or hotel check the availability for given requests and make reservations. Also, persons using ATMs fall under this category as he has access to limited portion of the database. Right? Then is standalone end users or online end users. These end users interact with the database directly or via online terminal or indirectly through menu or graphics based interfaces. They need not to be aware about the database or the DBMS. For example, users of a text package, library management software that stores variety of library data such as issue or return of books for fine purposes. Application programmers. Application programmers are responsible for writing application programs that use the database. These programs could be written in general purpose programming languages such as Visual Basic, Developer, C, C++, Fortran, Cobol, etc. to manipulate the database. These application programs operate on the data to perform various operations such as accessing information, inserting new information, deleting or changing existing information. Now, let us have a look on DBMS architecture. Let us start with the objectives of the DBMS architecture. First, all the users should be able to access the same data. That is, the architecture of DBMS should be such that all the users access same data. It is not like different data for different users. A user's view is immune to changes made in other views. That is, the external view that we will discuss shortly uh, should not depend upon any changes made in other views. For example, changes in hardware and operating system that is changes in internal level does not affect the user's view. Users should not need to know physical database storage details. It means users should not worry about the physical implementation and internal workings of the database such as data compression and encryption techniques etc. DBA should be able to change the database storage structures without affecting the user's view. Internal structure of database should be unaffected by changes to physical aspects of storage. DBA should be able to change conceptual structure of database without affecting all users. Now, after discussing the objectives, let us see the most commonly used framework for the database systems that is three level architecture. Three level architecture for the database systems was suggested by NC Spark, that is American National Standards Institute Standards Planning and Requirements Committee. It produced the most appropriate framework for large applications and for the applications that run on worldwide web. NC Spark produced an interim report in 1972 followed by the final report in 1977. The three levels of the architecture are the three different views of data. Look at the diagram. In this diagram, we see that there are three different levels of the three level architecture external view, conceptual view and internal view. We start with external view, so it is also known as individual user view. 
external level is at the highest of the three level DBMS architecture. It is the user's view of database. In this view, only the restricted portion of the database is available to the end users. Each external view represents restricted portion of the database as the user is interested only in some entities, attributes and relationships. Other entities, attributes or relationships in which the user is not interested may be represented in the database. For example, a department head may only be interested in the departmental finances, but not in library information. Accordingly, the librarian would not be interested in the information about academic staff. So, it will be better to create different views for each. Thus, database administrator gives permission to a department head only to view the departmental finances and librarian to only see information related to academic staff. Conceptual view or global view, so it is also known as community user view. The conceptual level or logical view is represented by the middle level in the three level architecture. It describes the logical structure of the whole database for a community of users that is the global view of data. It describes what type of data is stored in the database and the relationships among the data. The conceptual view does not contain any storage level details that is it is independent of both hardware and software. The software independence means that the view is not dependent on the DBMS used to implement the database. The hardware independence means that the view does not depend on the hardware used in the database. Thus, changes in either hardware or DBMS will not affect the database design at the conceptual level. If we change the servers from one configuration to the another, it will affect conceptual view. For example, the conceptual view as represented in the three level architecture is only concerned with the tables, its attributes or we say fields of table and their relationships. Internal level or physical or storage view we can say, it is the lowest level of the three level architecture. The internal view is the view of the actual physical storage of data. It defines us how data is stored physically in the database. It also defines the physical implementation of the database so as to achieve optimal runtime performance and storage space utilization which is required for efficient database. It also defines access paths of the database. For example, a table employee is first stored in the file employee with fields which are further stored in bytes internally. Look at this figure, it will make you clear that the functions of each level. We can see that at the external level, the user is concerned in getting the details of the particular customer loan details and is not concerned about how it has been organized in the database and further how has it been stored physically in the computer memory. Thus, it shows the user view of the data. At the conceptual level, the logical structure of the database is shown. In this level, the database design is there. How data is organized into tables in the database along with the constraints on the data. This is designed by the database designer. After studying in depth 
the requirements of the customer application. And at the internal level, it has been shown that how data is stored physically in the database onto the storage device. Now, we come to the mapping between the different levels. Uh, the three levels of DBMS architecture depend upon each other. So, there must be correspondence between these three levels. DBMS is responsible for the correspondence between these three levels. This correspondence between different levels is known as mapping. The request specified in the external level are transformed into the requests against the conceptual view and then into a request in the internal view for processing over the database. Then the resultant data must be reformatted into the form requested by the external view which is provided through the mapping between various levels or we can say views. Look at the diagram. This diagram clearly shows that mapping is basically of two types conceptual or internal mapping, external or conceptual mapping. The external or conceptual mapping lies between external and conceptual schema and it provides logical data independence whereas conceptual or internal mapping lies between conceptual and internal schema and provides physical data independence. Let us explain conceptual internal mapping. The conceptual schema lies between the conceptual and internal levels. It is related to internal schema through a conceptual or internal mapping. It defines the correspondence between the records and fields of the conceptual view and files and data structures of the internal view. If the structure of the stored database is changed, then the conceptual or internal mapping must also be changed accordingly, so that the view from the conceptual level remains constant. It is this mapping that provides physical data independence for the database. The conceptual or internal mapping enables DBMS to find the actual records in the physical storage that constitute logical record in the conceptual schema. External or conceptual mapping, this mapping lies between the external and conceptual levels. It defines the correspondence between a particular external view and the conceptual view. The names of different attributes in a particular external view may be different from those in the conceptual schema. The external or conceptual mapping enables DBMS to map names in the user's view on the relevant part of the conceptual schema. It is this mapping that provides logical data independence for the database. Now, we will discuss about data independence. Data independence is defined as the capacity to change the scheme at one level of database system without having to change the scheme at the next higher level. In other words, it allows change to a structure of a database without requiring application programs or users to make any changes in the way they access the data. Look at the figure. As we can see in this figure that the logical data independence lies between external and conceptual schema, whereas physical data independence lies between conceptual and internal schema. Thus, there are two kinds of data independence. First is logical data independence and second is physical data independence. Logical independence, uh, sometimes it is necessary to make a change in the conceptual schema. 
For example, we make change in the conceptual schema to expand the database or to reduce the database. With logical data independence, the changes in the conceptual schema is possible without changing the external schemas or rewriting the application programs. For example, consider the employee table with fields employee name, employee ID, department, date of birth. Now, if a new field such as salary is to be added to the employee table at conceptual view, it will not affect the external view of the users. Who is selecting employee name and ID fields from the table, right? So, what is physical data independence? Physical data independence. By physical data independence, we mean the amenity of conceptual or external schema to changes in the internal schema. So, if any changes are made in the internal schema, then this change would be absorbed by the mapping between the conceptual and internal levels. For example, a change to the internal schema such as using different file organizations or storage structures, storage devices or indexing strategy should be possible without having to change the conceptual or external schema. Now, we will talk about the database languages. The DBMS is an intermediate link between the physical database, computer and the operating system and the users. To provide the facilities to different type of users, a DBMS normally provides one or more specialized programming languages called database languages. These languages are data definition language, in short we say DDL, data manipulation language, in short we say DML then data control language, in short we say DCL. Let us start with data definition language. As the name suggests, this language is used to define various types of data in the database, their relationships with each other along with associated security and integrity constraints. DDL is used to define a scheme or plan or modifying an existing one. It cannot be used to perform any manipulations on data. Using DDL statements, we can create the structure of the table or tables. These tables are stored in a special file collectively called data dictionary. The basic functions performed by DDL are creating tables, files, databases and data dictionaries. Specify the storage structure of each table on disk. Integrity constraints on various tables, security and authorization information for each table, specify structure of each table and overall design of the database. Next language of DBMS is data manipulation language, in short it is DML. Once the structure of the table is created using DDL statements, it is necessary to populate it with the data. The language that helps to perform this task is data manipulation language. Besides inserting data into the existing table, it also helps in modification, deletion and retrieval of data from the database. To sum up, we can say data manipulation language is a language that provides a set of statements that supports various data manipulation operations on the data contained in the database. Basic functions that are performed by DBML are insert or add new data into the database, delete or remove existing data from the 
database retrieve data contained in the database modify data stored in the database on the basis of data retrieval techniques dml can be further be of two types procedural dml which allows user to describe what data is needed and how to get it the user express all the data access operations that are needed to obtain required inf information these are embedded in a high level language for example hierarchical dml relational algebra etc then is non procedural dml which allows user to describe what data is needed without specifying how to get it the dbms translates the dml statements into a procedure that manipulates required records so user is not concerned about what algorithms are required and how data structures are internally implemented to retrieve the data it thus provides data independence for example sql relational calculus etc so then comes the third language of the dbms that is data control language this database language is used by the dba that is database administrator for granting and revoking permissions to users for accessing the data from the database the dba creates users for accessing the data from the database if the users misuse the permissions those permissions can be revoked by the dba also and all these activities are done by the dba through dcl with this we come to end of today's lecture today we have discussed about the database users dbms architecture mapping between layers data independence ddl dml and dcl in the next lecture we'll discuss about the er diagram and its components in detail thank you